made a short form video on this demonstration and there were a lot of questions so I thought I'd try a longer format here. So what I've got, there's a funnel here at the top coming down through a tube and over on this side it makes a single loop and I've got another funnel over here that makes five loops. Very different behavior of what happens when you pour water into this slowly. So let's start. I've got this uh, azure blue water of the Mediterranean. Um, and I will slowly fill that. And you can see here it's partway filled and the water has started to come out. The level in the tube on both sides is about that high. I can fill that up until this one gets up here and then that will start to run out the other side. Let's add just a little more. A little bit more. And the water starts to run out the side. So you can see this loop in the tube causes it to back up to that point. We say water seeks its own level, and that's a simple statement of Pascal's principle. So the water level here comes about to the water level here. And if you notice, the water pressure going down here is going to be a function of the depth. And it doesn't matter what shape the container is, the water depth is going to be from there to there. On this side, we've got atmospheric pressure. On this side, we've got atmospheric pressure. But down here, we've increased atmospheric pressure by just a little bit. Let's come over here to the other side of the demonstration and take a look. Here we've got five loops, and we're looking pretty clearly at the first loop. So let's pour some water into that slowly and do the same thing. Again, you see I slowly fill up that first loop, and it's going to fill up till it gets to just the top, and there a little bit ran over. I don't know if you can see there's a little bit of water in the second loop. And in fact, there's enough that it has trapped an air bubble between here and there. So I've got atmospheric pressure here, uh, atmospheric pressure on the outgoing second loop, and right now there's really not any additional pressure in there. However, if I continue to fill this up, see more water running over there. I've got some amount of air trapped in there. And now my second loop has just filled up and run over just a little bit. Now observe that at the bottom of that second loop, I've got the air pressure that runs from there down to there. In fact, let me get this out of my mount and take a little bit better look. So this has air pressure that's equivalent to, or water pressure, that's equivalent to the top of that but inside this bubble, this bubble is trapped by the air pressure coming back from this tube. And so the depth of that second loop, which actually comes back around to there, it's moved up a little bit. The depth of that second tube creates some water pressure in the air gap that's coming from there up to there. And then the other side of this, um, sorry, from there to there, and then the other side of this is now at atmosphere until I trap this bubble in there by adding a little more water. And if you notice, as I slowly add the water, it's going to spill over. It's going to fill up that next section. And as it does that, it's going to increase the backup height in the tube. Keep doing that. Now it's running over all three of those loops. And it's going to start to fill the fourth loop. And once it runs over there, it's going to trap some air gap between the fourth and the fifth loop. And the water pressure is now all the way backed up into my funnel, just to, just to the bottom of the funnel and it will go up another bit 
I can increase it, keep adding some water. I've got those four bubbles trapped in there, but no water will come out until I get enough pressure to push over those four air gaps and then run around and come out my drain there. And the water level that it takes to do that, to get any water to come out, is all the way up here in the middle of my funnel. You can see a little bit leaking out. So it has to come over there. There's a pressure increase in this bubble, in this bubble, in this bubble, and in this bubble. And finally, this is atmospheric pressure on the outside. I hope that explains just a little bit better. This uh, has some influence on how the uh, trap in your drain works and why some of the older designs are not a good idea. They cause a little more backup than they should. But also what happens if you have a cooling system where it depends on a slow flow of water and you don't have a lot of pressure, not a powerful pump, but if your cooling system gets some air bubbles trapped in it, the amount of backup pressure on that system can be very difficult to deal with and becomes uh, no longer cooling. So let's see what happens if I fill this all the way up to the top. I think it will slowly drain out. Oh, I got enough pressure air there to actually push my air bubbles out. And it created a siphon and it dumped all of the water. Let me refill this vessel and see if we can try it again. So without those air gaps in there, it just takes a lot of pressure. And if I quickly fill this up, there we got one thing expunged. Now I've actually, I've only got, uh, well, there's a small air gap there because I poured it fast. It didn't have time to uh, seal itself off. Let's see what happens if I just push a lot of water through here. The drain works and it's going to even siphon out for a while. Now I've got no air trapped in there. Well, except maybe in this first loop. That's how you'd like it to work, but that's not how it, always how it works.